Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day, there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And today, I am so delighted. We're going to be talking about a, a very great service to help small business owners, and especially those who might be just starting out. And so please join me in welcoming Human Radnor to our program today. Welcome, Human. How are you? And I said your last name wrong, Radfar. There we go. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It happens. Uh, it's going to be great. Uh, I'm great. I'm great. How are you? Perfect. I love it. I love it. I'm doing good for this, this Monday morning as we're recording this. So let me tell people a little bit about you, and then we will jump into this. So Human Radfar is a founder dedicated to helping other founders. He's the co-founder and CEO of Collective, the first all-in-one back office for solopreneurs. Collective's vision is to increase the number of financially successful businesses of one by enabling self-employed people to focus on their passion and not their paperwork. Human also works with companies like Convoy, Sweetgreen, Thrive Market, on Fido, Uber, and other startups as an investor and advisor via his personal investment platform. He began his entrepreneurial career as the founder and CEO of Add This, which was acquired by Oracle in 2016. He has been named one of tech's best entrepreneurs in Business Week and one of iMedia's 25 most influential online marketing professionals. He has guest lectured on entrepreneurship and innovation at prominent institutions, including Stanford, Berkeley, and Carnegie Mellon. So again, Human, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Great. Well, you know, I always like to know from my guests how it is that they got to where they are today. So tell us a little bit about how you discovered that at least for right now, this is your passion in life. So uh, I think things are always clearer when you look backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I actually was talking to someone last week, which gave me some context for that answer. So uh, a person who was starting their career in uh, low 20s, and they, they, uh, they looked at my LinkedIn and they mm -hmm. said, it seems, you know, like you just kind of went in this straight line. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so obvious mm -hmm. in hindsight why you are where you are. And, mm -hmm. and I laughed because when you look at someone's background, I think, Sometimes, you know, when you look at that LinkedIn or you look at that resume, it appears to be a straight line, but it's right. almost like you have this zoomed out view of their career. Right. But when you zoom this, in, then I did this, then exactly, I did this. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But uh, I think I, I equate it. I'm a math person. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you look far away at something, it can look like a straight line. Right. But when you zoom in, it's like this. Yeah, a lot of peaks know, and along valleys. The way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, I think, you know, for me, this was a really natural outcome, mm -hmm. uh, all joking aside. And it's a culmination of a lot of different mm -hmm. things uh, that I've done in the past. Mm -hmm. But um, previously, you know, to Collective, I was a founding partner at a firm called Expo. So it's a venture mm -hmm. firm. And we focused really on being founders ourselves. We right. were all builders. Uh, Hands-on approach for helping people at the earliest stage. So mm -hmm. think um, you know, for those of your listeners that know the, the venture space, you know, pre-seed seed. So that means mm -hmm. early, early checks. Right. And, um, and you know, I discovered there that I really had a passion for serving other founders. It was a great customer. Mm -hmm. My business prior to that, add this, you know, it was much broader, expansive mm -hmm. customer. We had 15 million customers mm -hmm. um, using our platform. And uh, when I worked with them, I really enjoyed, you know, the scale Right. Of, of that. It was, it was mm -hmm. fun, especially at a school. Mm -hmm. And um, I also enjoyed the team dynamic mm -hmm. of it. And so basically what Collective is, is this beautiful kind of combination of all of my favorite parts of my experiences. Mm -hmm. I get to run, you know, versus venture capital, I get to be on an operating team. Mm -hmm. It's fast paced and moving quickly. I get to operate at scale, I hope, mm -hmm. knock on wood, where I can help lots and lots of folks. 
but I'm also dedicated to helping founders because mm-hmm. the largest group of founders in the country um, are people, you know, like my parents, right. uh, like some of my cousins mm-hmm. who are, we call them business of one, you know, mm-hmm. whether they are self-designated as consultants mm-hmm. or freelancers or realtors or whatnot. Mm-hmm. We all have friends that are doing mm-hmm. that. And so it, it really, um, it really was like this natural outcome of mm-hmm. all of those different experiences. I love it. You know, and, and I was looking at your website, um, which is collective.com, pretty easy. Um, and uh, w- one of the things that struck me, I mean, I, I started my business 20 years ago and I was reading through the services that you provide and I thought, would have been nice. <laughs> you know? And and I think that's one of the biggest things. And of course, we had so many people that launched businesses during COVID, right? They, for whatever sure. reason, you know, they, they had free time. They thought I hated that office, you know, all those things. And then they discover the very daunting tasks of actually setting up a business. And, you know, we've, I've talked with, you know, guests on the program before, about, you know, the fact that there are definitely steps that you need to take because you want to be, you want, you want to be a legal entity. I mean, that is one of the the big things to start with. I mean, you know, how many times have we worked with, oh, say a landscaper and they've said, write the check to me personally. (laughs) And you're like, okay. And, you know, usually by then they've done the project. And, and so, but, uh, you know, and, and, uh, you know, and so they're, there's and there's obviously multiple reasons for it, not the the least of which are things like um, liability. You know, do you want to lose your house if there's a problem or do you want your insurance policy for your business to get the hit? You know, things like that. So kind of talk us through because, yeah, you know, like I said, I was amazed you provide all of these services. And and I love it. You start your website with saying we're, we're not your average tax accounting and bookkeeping service, which is part of what you provide and then, but you provide all of these other things to founders. So talk to us a little bit about all of the services that you provide. Yeah. So, I mean, when we looked at it, we wanted to solve the problem, Mm -hmm. right? So we started out our journey, uh, like most founders, I hope, and you talk to your customer and, um, my co-founder led this, um, really great investigation. We talked to hundreds of folks and what we found ultimately was that these, you know, very small businesses, again, these businesses of one, mm-hmm. were perpetually kind of stressed about tax. Right. right. But they don't, they're, back, yeah, they have no idea what to do with taxes. And exactly. All of that. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and you often have this feeling of if I'm not doing it wrong, mm-hmm. then I'm most certainly not doing it right. You know right. what I mean? Because mm-hmm. doing it right, you hear about these stories of people mm-hmm. paying no taxes. And how is it that these hyper wealthy people, mm-hmm. you know, manage to find these loopholes? Mm-hmm. Like, how, how do I, how do I take advantage mm-hmm. of, the, of the system? And what we realized was that if you were to just focus on the tax solution, you couldn't, you couldn't actually solve the problem because Mm -hmm. a lot of the problem starts with how you're set up. Right. So what what are you even set up? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, In the case of many, you know, our, our particular, we call them members, Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of them have uh, an income level, which is sufficient for an S election. And I'm happy to talk about that, but Mm -hmm. then what, what is that? How do you Mm -hmm. do that? And then there's a system of record you have to build and mm-hmm. maintain in order for your taxes to be done, mm-hmm. right? So you have to do your bookkeeping, your payroll. Mm-hmm. And we thought, okay, look, the only way we can really commit mm-hmm. to trying to solve the tax problem is if we have the whole system. Right. Mm-hmm. And what we wanted to do is change a business, which, you know, I mean, it's characterized by these hyper local and it's nothing to, against these folks, but right. like- We need them. Centers. We love them. Mm-hmm. Sure. And my mom, my mom actually ran uh, or with, with uh, uh, quite a few of them, but mm-hmm. it's difficult when your whole business is time, right? Like, right. especially service providers. Mm-hmm. And so we thought, wow, what if we change it to from like this, like, well, I wonder what they're going to send me the bill this time to, mm-hmm. hey, you have a, you have a f- upfront pricing. Mm-hmm. It's all bundled together. Mm-hmm. And we promise that we're going to deliver an outcome. Like, what mm-hmm. would that be like? And what if we could take it from, you know, the classic taking a box with a you know pile of receipts mm-hmm. to just moving it online. Mm-hmm. And it was a pretty simple idea. But when we went back to those same hundreds of people who interviewed, talked to them about mm-hmm. that solution for their tax, they're like, okay, wait, that might make sense. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, there we are. And we've been doing it for a couple of years now. It mm-hmm. seems to be the right direction. Now, admittedly, I always have to improve, but um, I think, I think, I think we're on the right path. Mm-hmm. Right. When did you launch the business? So we launched Collective to the Public uh, fall of 2020. 
Okay. So yeah. was really it because time. of COVID? You know, no, or at least no. Okay. In fact, it was it was I mean, gosh, it depends on the hours you have, but uh we were so we started uh you know working on the business, you mm-hmm. know, it, there's this time before a time I right. Yeah, it's not ooh, right? let's have this idea and launch tomorrow. <laughs> correct, correct. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, we were uh you know, we went into the capital markets and in 2019 started to do that. 2020, we had, I believe, closed, mm-hmm. you know, that. So we had our, what's called the seed round. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then we started to build. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, I mean, I'm telling you, it was, it was crazy because I think it was within a month or two where COVID hit. And mm-hmm. I mean, you remember, I mean, it was right. so confusing and we mm-hmm. didn't know what to do. And in fact, I think at the beginning, given the scary nature of it, mm-hmm. we thought to ourselves, we're toast. Mm-hmm. We're toast. We started a right. business. The world's going to go crazy. Mm-hmm. We didn't know what was going on. Uh, in hindsight, of course, I think we all, everyone's like, well, of course, because of COVID, these businesses grew. Right. I mean, it, uh-huh. but at the time, remember when it was happening, we thought mm-hmm. we didn't know what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. So it was a pretty scary time for us mm-hmm. between, uh, and of course the world, but from a business perspective, mm-hmm. July, right. uh, up through like July. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden we started noticing, okay, well, applications are, 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 are ripping mm-hmm. on this beta and, and we, we're getting some good mm-hmm. results. And it seems like people are, continue mm-hmm. to work you know we're not right. all just bunkered up so well and you know of course the the thing with covid was as you said at the start we had no idea you know and and remember they told us two weeks and we all went uh-huh <laughs> you know? it's a worldwide pandemic and it's going to be all well, better I think everyone weeks. everyone was kind of i mean i mean it was it was very uh it, it's not something we've experienced in society. Right. I mean, the yeah. last time that we had experienced it was the influenza <clears throat> pandemic, which no one had any memory of. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think everyone was trying, you know, there was those who thought, well, science was going to take a firm mm-hmm. hand. There were those who thought it was going to mm-hmm. die out. And, and and all of them were, I think, valid right. kind of hypotheses. But mm-hmm. like, I, I remember, I mean, even my co-founders, we were a microcosm of it. Um, mm-hmm. So we were sitting down. I remember um, I had talked to, my cousin, I think, who had just come back mm-hmm. from China, I talked to a bunch Ooh. of different people. Mm-hmm. And everyone I talked to overseas had been like, this is real. This is pretty mm-hmm. serious. Right. And, uh, you know, it's moving quickly. And I thought, I told my co-founders, you know, we had just kind of started building our company. We had a handful mm-hmm. of people. And I thought, we should tell everyone to go home. Mm-hmm. And they looked at me and they're from Turkey. And, and God bless them. I mean, they're, they're resilient people. They're tough people. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, we right. have this all the time. You yeah, know, yeah. It's, it's mm-hmm. fine. Who cares? And they, they have plagues. I, I, think, I, I think this is different, you know. I think mm-hmm. this is not going to be quite the same. Right. And uh, so we ended up, uh, I think, I, I can't remember the exact date, but pre- before San Francisco had shut down, which mm-hmm. if you recall, was mm-hmm. one of the first cities. Right, yeah. We had a team meeting and I said, guys, everyone go, let's go to remote. I yeah, mean, and remember, that, again, mm-hmm. that was like, a, mm-hmm. nobody knew what that was going to be right. like, right? Because Zoom was not the same. Like mm-hmm. we're sitting here now, we're all so used to this. Mm-hmm. And I was so terrified because I thought mm-hmm. to myself, again, this is the first like chink in the armor, right. you know, even, even if we survive this being mm-hmm. a remote company I and mean, that's mm-hmm. so difficult, how are we mm-hmm. going to, we're not talking to and see each other. And then I, I think it was a couple weeks later, mm-hmm. boom. I mean, yeah. and, and, and we saw it and uh, people were stockpiling toilet paper. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> that's where we I, uh, that was one of the funniest things. I'm like, okay. Um, well, and you know, we really, I think, you know, we all knew it wasn't going to be two weeks. I mean, you know, it was just, it was going to be longer than that, but I think we all thought two months, you know, because like you said, science would, would take control, <clears throat> you know, and, and all of these things. And probably at about month three or four was when people went, oh, okay. You know, and, and, you know, I, I have not looked to see any of the stats where people really started starting their own businesses and the things, but, you know, at some point, I think, especially when we were all working remotely and people kind of juggled their hours around and thought either a, I don't want to go back into that office or B I've got all this extra time and I've always wanted to do X. Um, you know, or maybe they were doing it. Maybe they were a consultant. Maybe they were, um, you know, did it as a hobby, you know, all of those various things. But about that point, you know, was when people thought I could do this, I could start my own business. And, you know, as, as I said, you know, when, when we think, Hey, I have this business idea and I want to start this, we have no idea what all it takes. And, you know, I think that to be 
was one of the most confusing things. Now, it, it was really funny when I started my business. So I started Wise Women Communications over 20 years ago. So before we had the internet um, and, uh, you know, and, and I lived in Colorado and I, you know, took my little self down to the Colorado Secretary of State's office wrote my check for, I think, 30 bucks. I mean, you know, because I was doing an LLC, um, a woman owned LLC was how my company was set up. And they gave me quite literally a little piece of paper that was the strip of, of tape from the cash register. That's my business. <laughs> and that was it. And I was like, I mean, I wanted, you know, bells, whistles, confetti, all sorts of stuff. And she hands me this receipt and went next, right? And but but then it had to be real, you know. Okay. So I said I'm an LLC. What does that mean? You know, do I need articles in, of incorporation? Oh my gosh, if I'm gonna pay somebody, what do we do? You know, and, and then tax time comes around and, and all of those things. And I think that is why so many small businesses fail is they just don't have that infrastructure um, in, in order to handle all that. They've got these great, fabulous ideas, but it's that basis that, you know, that, that they just either didn't know they needed to do or just didn't do. I mean, you know, kind of like the landscaper that says, hey, write me the check. He knows he's got to do, but he's just not going to do it. So, you know, Talk to us about how it is that that small businesses have got to start themselves off and and you know on the right foot. You know why is that so absolutely critical? Well, I think look every every business is different. You mentioned you know your start, and I think everyone has different levels of commitment. Mm -hmm. You know, different revenue generation capabilities. But I think one thing that's common is mm -hmm. you want to reduce risk, right? Right. And let's assume that you want to pay taxes too, because that's a whole nother class of people. Yeah, that, okay, uh, people that are doing yeah. cash, we're, we're cash good businesses. People. We're going to pay taxes. <laughs> and uh, you know, you mentioned your contractor example, and 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 I'm not pointing fingers, but you know, you, you, there's a very famous, you know, cash only kind of yeah. set of businesses I mean, that there. Just so exists. this mm -hmm. this wouldn't refer to those folks, no. um, you know, for better or for worse there. And and uh, but I think people that are you know kind of going to be part of of, of the mainstream there, you. You're going to have to pay taxes, mm -hmm. right? And you're going to have issues with the business. Mm -hmm. That's the reality of it. Right. And when you look at a business over a period of time, you know, in particular businesses successful, mm -hmm. 20 years is a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Like you've, you've been around, right. bad things happen. It is just what mm -hmm. it is. Um, mm -hmm. And so one of the, the playbook pieces of advice that I tell folks is you need to separate yourself from your concern. Right. And so to do that, you know, I think a, a good start is a limited liability corporation. Mm -hmm. So Typically, most businesses, when they start, and this isn't bad, uh, but, you know, they'll just be what's called a sole proprietor. Right. In English, that means I don't have a business structure. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just it's myself. Just me. On the, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just me. And that's okay. Maybe you're mm -hmm. testing it out. Maybe right. you're not sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're not loved for the commitment. But, you know, what I often say is better safe than sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, if, especially if you're in a business that's serving other businesses right. or people with liability, mm -hmm. you know, limited li liability mm -hmm. corporation mm -hmm. can help you. Because you are now not the accountable entity. So God mm -hmm. forbid, and, and you, we all know this, and I assume the best of intent people, but someone thinks that they're right and you're wrong and they come mm -hmm. after you and sue you. Right. Well, they're not going to sue you. They're right. going to they're gonna sue the company. Right. And if the, the company can't lose this, then the company is going to mm -hmm. be potentially insolvent, not you. Mm -hmm. And that's just the standard thing. The other thing that's a good feature of it is you can start to attribute expenses to the company. Mm -hmm. And right. so that's the beginning of that journey, mm -hmm. if you will, or you could start to optimize mm -hmm. your taxes. Mm -hmm. And so the cost of that is so negligible and it's mm -hmm. so easy now with online mm -hmm. tools, right. you know, that I say like, that's probably something that I would, I, it used to be hard. I mean, you know, you'd have mm -hmm. to go in and even domains, web domains, you'd have to go in and call like the DOD. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now because of online tools, I say like, I would recommend nine times out of 10, just going and doing that. Cause starting it up and shutting it down is so easy mm -hmm. um that it's, it's probably worth the liability mm -hmm. risk uh there now that is for companies in my opinion that don't intend to raise for example venture capital right. or something mm -hmm. like that if you're if you want to build a company like collective or something else where you know you're going to sell shares to somebody mm -hmm. i think that uh, i would recommend having a c corp and there's mm -hmm. a whole different right you know right. set but like mm -hmm. if you were to hear this you know folks in the audience like 99 percent of people don't ever want to raise venture capital and that's oh. perfectly all right mm -hmm. And LC probably will cut the cut the mm -hmm. right. uh, muster for that. Right. 
Well, you know, and it's interesting when I was, you know, getting ready to start my business, I actually talked to some really smart people and I was smart enough to take their advice is maybe the, the better thing, you know, and some of the things that they told me were things, you know, and, and I remember, you know, they said I could either make it look like it was my hobby or I could make it look like a business. And, you know, things like one of the things that, that one person told me, she said, you know, set up my bank account, a, a separate bank account and do it in a different bank. Um, so, you know, our personal oh, yeah. account was with a credit union and I opened my account with the, the it's with, you know, one of the big guys. Um, and, and she said several reasons. First of all, it makes it harder to co-mingle the funds, you know, which, you know, my, my accountant just thinks is great, but um, you know, and, and she said, because it's real easy when they're all in the same place to just transfer funds back and forth, you grab the wrong MasterCard. I mean, all of those various things. And so she said, you know, do that. And then other things like, you know, get, get real stationary. Um, and now this was, you know, like I said, 20 years ago. And so we still did a lot of stuff by mailing it. And she said, you know, don't be putting stickers with your company name on an envelope. You know, you want people, she said, if you want people to pay you money, they need to know that you are a real entity. And, you know, and, and I think that's a big part of this is setting everything up so that you are a real business is very important. You well, know, it's because, funny because you, I think the analog for that today is you know, often like, do you have a website, right? right. That's like the, oh, yeah. Yeah. For, for the stationery. Mm -hmm. And and I do want to call out, um, it, it's, it's a really, really good piece of advice. So people really, it's, it's a super, again, starting an online bank is so mm -hmm. a banking out is so easy. And even if you don't start one that is associated mm -hmm. with the tax ID mm -hmm. of that right, right away, just having it be separate. Mm -hmm. There's a million reasons. Um, but one that I'll tell you is, you will take your accounting bill down a ton. Let right. me give you the selfish one, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you mm -hmm. can point to, just say, hey, there's only one account right. mm -hmm. that everything's coming in and out mm -hmm. of, and maybe, okay, you get, you get, you know, mm -hmm. really, really excited and use a credit card with it too, but that mm -hmm. credit card only points to one account. You you don't have a pile of like mm -hmm. papers and then an yeah, online and then you're wall, going, it's a lot easier. Uh, and, and worse, you know, say you go to the you know, office supply place and you buy some personal stuff and you buy some business stuff and you're looking at the receipt eight months later going, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to reduce your costs mm -hmm. and then increase your capabilities mm -hmm. for uh, tax savings, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a great second piece of advice. I just do want to reinforce that, that that's like one, I, my mom gave me the same exact mm -hmm. advice for my first business. And it really, really, mm -hmm. really was helpful because right. we were running for, you know, again, the time before the time mm -hmm. before we raised venture capital, we mm -hmm. were just consulting, doing whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. But when it came time to go raise money, mm -hmm. I had a pretty clean chart of accounts. Like yeah. I could, I could pull mm -hmm. my reports really easily. Right. Well, and you were not, you know, it, because if somebody's going to invest in you, I mean, obviously what they are looking at is risk, you know, and, and when you are an ongoing real business entity, you are less risky than, you know, Hey, I'm Bob. I've started this fun thing. Give me money. <laughs> right. Um, and they're going to say, have a good time, Bob, <laughs> you know, and, and send you on your way. But when you say, you know, here are my, you know, uh, all of the things that go along with it, like you said, a website, you know, and, and folks, this is easy. This, you know, this is not difficult anymore. You know, when I started, we had to know HTML programming and all of this stuff. And now thank God for WordPress, you know, and, and, or you can even do something smaller, like, you know, with, with some of the, the services where, you know, especially if you just need a page or two of something, I mean, it's, it is so easy or more importantly, it's very easy to hire somebody to do it for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and so, yeah, so you've got that website, you might have your social, you know, things set up depending on what it is that you're doing. The more you are a true business, the, the better it is. I mean, one of the other things she told me, and I just thought this was one of the stupidest things in the world, but it was really funny. She said, get, and because, you know, like I said, this was 20 years ago. And so we sent out a lot of things via mail. She said, get one of those postal meter doohickeys, um, you know, and, and she said, because stamps are a different level. She said, you're not real serious. And, and so I had, you know, this postage machine that I got from the post office and you'd go, you know, and you'd run everything through. Um, and I mean, it was just, it's all the appearance. I mean, it was still, and I, and maybe this is, is the thing because we're talking about the business of one. I was a business of one, 
I did not want to appear like I was a business of one. Um, you know, and, and I think that was, was the big thing. I was the face of the business, but you know, nobody ever had to know that, you know, who, who else was, was with me. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very critical distinction. Mm -hmm. And now with the internet being where it is and the tools being what they are building an online presence again, like you're, Mm -hmm. quote, you know, quote unquote stationary too. And like mm -hmm. even putting your logo on invoices, mm -hmm. making right. sure you have an email mm -hmm. domains, um, there's yeah, folks, you things, do but... not need so-and-so at gmail.com <laughs> you know? well, used to be AOL, you, worst, right? I know yeah. I was about mm -hmm. to say, you know, mm -hmm. the worst is when you now, I mean, it's, it's oh, yeah. gotten to a point where if you get, uh, you know, an email from the wrong domain and, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of respect to the AOL founders. They were, they were my original, uh, mm -hmm. that's my first company, but you know, that getting an email from AOL is mm -hmm. not it used to be, okay, this is a like real right. thing. Oh, and yeah. now it's like, wait a minute, are you scamming mm -hmm. me? Like, mm -hmm. or like yeah. a hotmail or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And so all of these things, you know, we talked about, I would say the things that you're doing for, you know, protecting yourself mm -hmm. and those basics, but there's also mm -hmm. this, you know, the perception and the branding, mm -hmm. the positioning, and the more that you can invest in those things, I think it can make a huge mm -hmm. difference because your customer right. feels more trust. Mm -hmm. They feel more willing to work mm -hmm. with you. So, right. and when they trust you, they will write a check to you. I mean, that's, that's the thing, um, you know, that's and, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and again, it doesn't cost much. It's, and I mean, that's been kind of one of the funny things to, to watch through the years. You know, my first domain cost me, I think 150 bucks to buy, um, you know, and, and, uh, and, and there was, what was your one, first domain? Do you remember? Uh, it would have been wisewomencommunications.com. And I actually still okay. have it, but I, you know, I don't okay. pay nearly $150 a year for it. Um, and now, oh my gosh, you know, there are times where I've bought domain names for a year for 99 cents, right? You know, and, and, um, you know, and, and so it has, you know, and, and just all these things like hosting, hosting used to be, a, you know, a big expense. And now, you know, you can, you can host multiple websites for, you know, very inexpensive, all sorts of things. Like we said, it's much less expensive to develop these websites. And you can go to Fiverr and have somebody don't, you know, design a logo for you. You know, I remember when I would want to buy a photo, a stock photo, and I've paid over a thousand dollars for a photo. Well, it's, now, like, it's, it's an interesting free. point. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you get to, so you're talking about something that I is kind of uh, cutting to the heart of, mm -hmm. of where the world is going mm -hmm. and the cost for starting and running mm -hmm. a new business, mm -hmm. in particular business of one has been dropping dramatically. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now you're seeing, um, you know, uh, like, women like uh, Elaine Potfell, I don't know if you, mm -hmm. you follow her, but she's on Forbes. She wrote, I think, mm -hmm. uh, a, a book about these, these tiny businesses. And um, people are making millions of dollars and they're right. one person. Mm -hmm. And so, you okay, that's where we are today. But I think now with, um, and I'm an optimist, but like mm -hmm. I look at where AI is going and mm -hmm. you talked about one example, like look at photos. Mm -hmm. Now you can use generative AI you know, right. that drops even mm -hmm. further. Mm -hmm. You talk about and websites. Well, they'll help you with free. that. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, um, you know, an example that I often give to people is, you know, I don't, do you know how many employees Instagram had when they sold? For, uh, you know, not dollars? very many or when they yeah. sold. I'm not sure. I know. Like, I mean, they like obviously 13, started. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 13 to mm -hmm. generate a billion dollars of value. And mm -hmm. so, when I look at that, and of course that was an outlier, you say, okay, well, what mm -hmm. do they have at the end of the day? You know, they had a mm -hmm. bunch of designers, developers, and mm -hmm. talented folks. But is it possible, you know, in 10 years, and mm -hmm. this is coming in a decade that, okay, we've reduced the cost of it dramatically. You just gave mm -hmm. a, a lot of great examples that now with AI, and by the way, those costs are still going down. Mm -hmm. It's not like right. they just, the, mm -hmm. the ones that you mentioned, that someone could, in theory, maybe them and their friend, maybe them and some contractors, but but also with AI as workers, mm -hmm. go from right. millions of dollars mm -hmm. and create that kind of mm -hmm. we call it the billion dollars one. So that's right. what I'm I'm intrigued to see how much value creation mm -hmm. can be driven by you know a single person mm -hmm. given the tool sets that are right. that are emerging. It's right. it's fascinating. Yeah. Well, and you know, of course, all of these million and billion dollar businesses now started out little, you know. We've all heard the story. Jeff Bezos sold books out of his garage and, you know, and, and he's now one of the most wealthy people in the world. And, and yeah, and, and it would be interesting to go back in time and say, you know, what are your, what are your five-year goals? What are your 10-year goals? Just to see what he would say. You know, I'm pretty sure he did not figure he would be where he is now. I mean, just because 
the sheer audaciousness of that, right? You know, that would have just been wild. I think, I think you know, there's something interesting about, you know, where, you know, the difference between a hope and a, an expectation. And mm-hmm. I think probably he had hoped, you know. It, right. But yeah. I mean, thinking, if you look at where they were, I think Amazon started in 93. That was when the world was, it was 93. That was before. when the, the web world, first really Yeah, was, the web mm-hmm, was mm-hmm. technically started, I think, 93. Mm-hmm. And so- Okay, so they thought this was going really quickly mm-hmm. and that this was going to be a thing. So mm-hmm. for him to envision being a billion dollar company probably mm-hmm. sounded pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. To envision it being a trillion dollars. Right. Oh, that, yeah. It, saying a trillion that's bigger than countries. Sound like, it's, like mm-hmm. a, it's like a comedy movie, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Right. And so now that's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. These companies, uh, these technology companies are now as influential, mm-hmm. in some cases, more, mo- more influential right. than most countries, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so, and it, they're still growing. Mm-hmm. So, it's again another fascinating thing to watch in the next 10 years is do they get to stay that big? Right. Mm-hmm. Will they get broken up? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because that is one of the things is, you know, some of these things the government is going, hmm. Um, but but yeah, it's you know, and and I think that one of the key points is, you know, it, businesses are starting today in somebody's garage or spare bedroom that very easily could be a trillion dollar business before too long. Um, you know, and and I mean, what, 93 to now, that's, I can't do that math. That's 30 years. Um, and yeah, I mean, to, to think of that type of growth and now, you know, obviously technology was the, the big driving factor of that, uh, you know, and, and, but it just, you know, and, and so again, you want to start right. Uh, you know, it's, it's like we say, you know, if you're building a building, if you don't have that good foundation, it's not going to matter. And, and, and even worse, if you have a bad foundation and you start building, it could collapse on you. Um, you know, so why not start right? And so that's what I love that, that you provide this um, through your company to be able to do that. And, you know, it's, it's, it really is just, you know, it's, it's because, yeah, I mean, it's, it's perplexing, you know, I want, I want to do my widgets. I don't want to know how to form an S corp. Right. Well, I mean, look, and we, we had a, we had a point of view when we were starting out and, um, you know, I'm, you know, technical background. So are my mm-hmm. co-founders and we thought to ourselves, it used to be, and uh, this is going to maybe date me a little bit, but like when you're developing a web-based service, you would actually have to consider where the boxes, you right. know, that mm-hmm. ran your servers mm-hmm. would be. You'd have to buy boxes. You'd mm-hmm. have to get data center mm-hmm. space. You have to think of all these things. Right. Now developers don't think about that. No. They go on. They don't Amazon even know it exists. Services, it's just it's somewhere. Website. It's a cloud. Mm-hmm. It's the cloud, mm-hmm. right? And it's all virtual. So when they're coding somewhere, somehow, mm-hmm. you know, this is all getting provisioned. And mm-hmm. we thought to ourselves, why is it that my point of view is that in 10 years, I'm going to bet that most small, small businesses mm-hmm. will similarly look back and say, wow, you have to worry about like bookkeeping mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. tax and all right. these other things. That should be something that is hidden from them and mm-hmm. abstracted so that they can mm-hmm. focus on what they're good at. And, you know, I think, I hope collective plays a role in that mm-hmm. and an outsized role, but regardless, I think there's a trend behind mm-hmm. us, which is bigger than even the company is mm-hmm. saying that there's just too many of these folks. Right. You can't have 39% mm-hmm. of the United States being solopreneurs and this continue, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, it's not, it, it's not realistic. Right. And I think if you can make it easier, just like we saw the other mm-hmm. parts of the business, right. You talk about mm-hmm. website creation mm-hmm. and hosting then how many more entrepreneurs are we going to enable, mm-hmm. right? That we're kind of right. sitting on the silence. And for mm-hmm. them, for whatever reason, that mm-hmm. was a blocker, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so our hope is that it unleashes some innovation and it, and it lets people go out and, and be on their own. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and it, it's, it really is, you know, like we were saying, technology is what's going to enable this, um, you know, and, and just things like, you know, a couple of years ago and still, I mean, you know, one of the, the key things is automation. You know, we're going to talk about AI in a second, but automation, you know, is, is one of the things, whether it's your CRM, you know, you're not worrying about, I have to send out the email to everybody. Nope. It's just all set up. Uh, when, you know, I, I, uh, I hate invoicing. I just, I hate invoicing. I've said it before. You know, I just, that's one of those things. And I mean, I literally would have clients say, um, don't you need to invoice me? I'm like, oh, for God's sakes. And when I discovered that, you know, and now I, you know, long ago, I got off of keeping my bookkeeping on Excel. I mean, you know, when I first started, I did, but you know, now it's on, it's on QuickBooks, you know, and, and because of what I do, that level is, is, you know, is fine. But when I discovered I could automate my invoicing through QuickBooks, 
Oh my gosh. I mean, you know, now do I have to go in and tweak them? Yes. Because, you know, the, I add things for, for, you know, clients, but, but yeah, I mean, just the fact that for one thing, I didn't have to think about it. It was done. It was going to be done. It was off my plate. And so, you know, automating, whether it's through you, whether it's through whatever, I mean, things like that are, are perfect. But now, of course, as you said, we have AI, um, you know, and, and I think, you know, is it scary? Sure. And is it going to change, you know, get rid of some people's jobs? Right. It will. I mean, you know, be, you know, Henry Ford got rid of people's jobs when he started things too. I mean, you know, so this, um, but you know, what, what it's going to do is it frees up those people to do something else, whether it's in your company or whatever, but, but talk more about how AI is really going to change stuff, which I know, you know, we could go on for like five hours with that, but you know, how is AI really going to, to help small businesses? So, I mean, again, I think you made uh, the point. Uh, you could spend five hours. I think you could spend five days. I think you spend five mm-hmm. years. It, and it will have changed tra- in that time period. That's the thing because it's moving so rapidly. Yeah. So just let's put some perspective behind it. So how fast is it moving? Mm-hmm. When you look at, uh, and I think at this point, most people who are listening, whether you're technical or not, have heard at least anecdotally of Moore's Law, which is mm-hmm. you know how often the power of um, chips are doubling. Mm-hmm. And Right now, it's been for you know a long period of time doubling every year, mm-hmm. which is pretty fast. Right. As you compound, uh, Warren Buffett fans know that uh, you know compounding is a very powerful mm-hmm. effect. Mm-hmm. AI right now is doubling every three point five months mm-hmm. in terms of its power. That is mm-hmm. really fast, right? And so, to your point, it's moving so quickly, right? And um, nowhere is this more evident than probably one of the more popular and sensationalized services, which is you look at. Um, open AI's, mm-hmm. you know, GPT platform, right. and, you know, that platform, when you look at the difference between 3.0 and 4.0, mm-hmm. it's unbelievable. Right. 4.0 right now, which is their latest released version is testing at the 90th percentile mm-hmm. of standardized tests. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you and I don't know about our readers, but like, that's pretty good. Let's mm-hmm. be, let's be humble there. And so when you look at that type of technology, I mean, the, the applications of that, the large language models, as they're called, the ones that are, you know, mm-hmm. in, in plain speak, just like talking to us like a human, mm-hmm. you have, you can dramatically reduce the rate of cop- mm-hmm. copywriting, research, editing, mm-hmm. you know. So what I do is I can look at any different part of the fun- like any function, whether it's marketing, mm-hmm. whether it's finance and everything else. And you can kind of look and see how all these technologies mm-hmm. can be applied. And it's just, it's almost too staggering. I mm-hmm. mean, there's now a hundred companies that are either built on these mm-hmm. platforms like open AI, like they're called foundational platforms, mm-hmm. um, or there are these companies that are, you know, trying to build their own model themselves. But I think uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for better or for worse, this is, it's a Jack Welsh had this saying, um, you know, when I, I mean, look for opportunity in train wrecks, mm-hmm. right. And this is a train wreck of epic proportion. Every single incumbent, mm-hmm. if they don't, change their platforms mm-hmm. to adjust to AI right. is subject to disruption, which mm-hmm. means for all you entrepreneurs out there, you can either just, you know, there's just too, so much mm-hmm. disrupt. And I'll, I'll give you like a more simple example. Like you look at bookkeeping. And so bookkeepers right now, you can look at this and say, wow, I'm going to be, you know, toast. Or mm-hmm. you say, you know what? Wait a minute. If I figure out the right tools to mm-hmm. use here, I'm charging, I don't know what they charge anywhere between 99 and 200 bucks, let's mm-hmm. say for an average person per mm-hmm. month, I could try to still charge that, but I'm going to, I can cut my workload down right. tremendously. And have five times as many clients. There you go. So that's, that's like, you can either do that and increase your margin, mm-hmm. or you could say, you know what, uh, I'm in uh, Colorado or mm-hmm. wherever, and I know my market, I can drop my cost in half and mm-hmm. still do the same amount of work. And mm-hmm. so I can get scale and volume. Mm-hmm. And so there's these immediate applications mm-hmm. that we can trans, you know, use for normal business strategy, right. pricing and mm-hmm. volume mm-hmm. and say, hey, let's go for it. And that applies to look at if I was a writer right now um, and I'm my, you know, I'm a creative and I mm-hmm. want to go work for people doing copy. This is great mm-hmm. because I would have had to probably outsource and go overseas. You mentioned mm-hmm. Fiverr or Upwork, and I'm not suggesting that they can't do that or won't do that or mm-hmm. that all those folks would be displaced, but like. Maybe you have like a bunch of 80% of your project are pretty mm-hmm. easy, right? Okay, well, now I shift my role from a writer to an editor of right. a staff mm-hmm. that costs me pennies mm-hmm. on the dollar. 
And so I can output more work. So I think for mm-hmm. businesses of one in particular, mm-hmm. this is so powerful. If you're mm-hmm. willing to just lean into it, right. go read the tools. Mm-hmm. Now you have some strategic decisions. Mm-hmm. What, how do you want to benefit from right. it in the short term? Mm-hmm. And, if, and then there's a longer discussion which mm-hmm. we can have, which is, okay, now in five years, if it's like, you know, mm-hmm. way, way more powerful, is there a, a terminal point here right. where everyone's kind of done? Mm-hmm. We can have that discussion, but like, I think in the near, near term, there's, this is going to be one of the most outsized periods of value creation right. in human history. Oh yeah. You know, and, and I use it, to, you know, I, I don't use it nearly like I should. Um, and I certainly don't use the prompts like I should, you know, and, and uh, which, you know, it's, it's funny. We had a, another guest on who, who talked about that and, and um, you know, and, and, but yeah, to me, it's gotten rid of what I call the, the blank paper syndrome. Yeah. You know, the like I, you know, I, I have a, a, a an entity that I started to help people who are dealing with cancer. And so, you know, what we started doing blog posts, right? You know, because that's important. Months, months went by with me going, I gotta write a blog post. I got and and it, it stayed blank. I mean, that white paper, that white screen stayed perfectly blank. I go to chat GPT, I type in there, write a blog post about yada yada, 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 yada. And I, and I tell people, I, to me, it's fascinating to watch it type. I mean, it's just, you know, it's like, ooh. Um, it's like one of those 80s sci-fi movies, you know, where you I see know. the AI. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, my gosh. And, and, and it wrote a good blog post. Then I edited it to make it into my voice, which now I know, you know, it's, it's going to start adapting to maybe my voice and, and things like that. But, you know, I do that. I have it write emails pitch letters, you know, all these things. Uh, it's, uh, I belong to a, a great mastermind group of uh, very incredible, talented women. And two of them are uh, doing a joint project. And so we all had a call last week to kind of brainstorm and help on, on you know, how are they going to promote this? What marketing are they going to use? And I said, wait a minute. And I go to chat GPT is they're chatting. And I type in, you know, write a marketing piece, you know, for this, 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 and this. And it goes boogity, 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 um, which is the technical term. And, um, you know, and, and we were blown away with what it suggested. Oh, it's and, you know, yeah. yeah, it was just, it was incredible. And so what we spent hours going, uh, 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 you know, not coming up with anything we really liked. It took me five minutes of, you know, and, and we didn't even fine tune it, you know, because well, I, like I, I, I think said, that that's know. like one of the you know, you're touching on something which I think people have a fear around Mm -hmm. that if they, again, if you lean into it in the near term, and again, Mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting there aren't costs this, and I'm not suggesting Mm -hmm. that we have to be careful. Um, But when you look at uh, creatives in particular, Mm -hmm. um, I think you're going to see a different style of collaboration to Mm -hmm. your point, Mm -hmm. Um, that blank page problem. So you're a songwriter Mm -hmm. and you're like, oh man, I got to now depend on someone for the tracks and this Mm -hmm. and that and the other. What if you don't? Right. What if it's just you? Mm-hmm. Or at least you can move further. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, you bend your collaborative, right. which are most creatives and artists mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. And I think all of us at the core, whether we're business people or artists, we are inherently creative. Mm-hmm. And part of creativity is collaboration and synthesis. Mm-hmm. So someone gives you an idea and you bounce and you bounce right. and you bounce. Right. Having a partner where you can just, without fear, mm-hmm. throw the craziest stuff mm-hmm. at them. And then come back right. can generate more forward mm-hmm. motion. And mm-hmm. I think that's also, you know, something that people can enjoy. And um, it's funny because someone was talking about automation and displacement of um, of jobs. And by the way, it's mm-hmm. not just a- AI is a multidiscipline. It's not right. just large language models. Mm-hmm. So you could have automation robotics. Mm-hmm. And yeah, robotics lot- is a big example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And vision systems. And so they're talking about factories. And I mm-hmm. thought, I said, you should go look up some newspaper articles from um, turn of the century mm-hmm. or, or, or even before, way before like the industrial right. revolution mm-hmm. and take a look at how uh, people were protesting mm-hmm. the, the transition from right. the agrarian society, which mm-hmm. was like 85% mm-hmm. of jobs, mm-hmm. which is now less than 5% mm-hmm. by the way. And, and saying how it was dehumanizing and it was, you know, horrible. And now this generation is sitting mm-hmm. there staunchly defending what mm-hmm. that previous generation had said, was dehumanizing mm-hmm. and terrible. And I think, well, we, it's because we don't know what's next. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm, I'm, right. I believe that it can unleash mm-hmm. and put us into more creative jobs, more human to human jobs, mm-hmm. more service oriented jobs. Um, like, you know, the classic example I talk about is, um, you know, I was an investor in a company called Sweetgreen, mm-hmm. um, which, is, which has gone public. And then there was another company called Spice mm-hmm. and that I invested, it was a tech company at MIT. Mm-hmm. 
Spice built robots that were what's called back of house in a restaurant okay. and they would make the salad. So we can oh, make okay. salads. So right. Which is a did. pretty basic function. There you go. Mm-hmm. Sweet Green bought them, goes public. Well, I, I think in Chicago, I want to say it's Napier, they've launched mm-hmm. this concept where it's actually implementing this mm-hmm. and it's there. Mm-hmm. And so when you look at that, okay, well, you say, well, that could have been people chopping salads and mm-hmm. doing all this stuff. And and I said, have you ever done that? It's like, it's a pretty stressful job. It's like, well, mm-hmm. what are these folks going to do? Well, hold on. Now there's all these online marketplaces, mm-hmm. Upwork, Fiverr, there's right. verticalized versions mm-hmm. of it, um, fitness so mm-hmm. say you're into fitness. Mm-hmm. Well, you could go make, you know, and it depends on where you are, but let's mm-hmm. say in New York, $15 an hour, let's mm-hmm. say you're in the suburbs, $12 an hour, mm-hmm. or you go on one of these apps mm-hmm. and you might make 20 bucks an hour to be right. a fitness coach. Mm-hmm. You get in shape, you mm-hmm. get to connect with people, you mm-hmm. get to do something you love. And so mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't have all them in. I don't mm-hmm. think anyone who purports to do don't, but I don't think it's this dark gloom and doom right. or just this bright future, but there's so mm-hmm. many opportunities to put people into more mm-hmm. actualizing, you know, positions now, right. but Again, I start, I am an optimist. So right. that, that is well, my fatal now, flaw. If it calls me how, I might really start freaking out, right? Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, you, you had a great example when you were talking about the accountant, you know, so they, they, they start using AI, they're able to do this and they can either A, have more free time to do what they want with. You know, which can be fun free time. I mean, you know, maybe they decide they want to take up a hobby. They want to spend more time with their kids. I mean, you know, do whatever, or they can use it on their business. I mean, you know, it's, it's there, you know, or, you know, lots of combinations. And, and so it's, it's all in how we use it, Uh, you know, and, and like I told somebody, I said, okay, so I can have, I can pay somebody to write these letters for me, or I can use chat GPT. And have it done, you know, and, 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 you know, there's, it is kind of one of these things, whereas, as my mom would have said, you know, six of one, half a dozen of another, you know, it's, it's each one has its benefits, but yeah, if it makes life easier so that then we can do more of what we really want to do, this is not a bad thing. You know, I don't see this as right. Maybe not in my lifetime of, you know, technology taking over you know this is not terminator this is not you know it's it in but it's it's in how we use it now i understand you know like the screen actors guild and and and, yep. and writers i mean you know especially writers it's it's got to be scary to be somebody who is in an industry where somebody could do that now you know are is somebody going to go to something like chat gpt and say write us a love story about yada 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 and and it's going to write this full script and they go oh this is cool no <laughs> it was at least not the way it exists now um well, i think I, mean, I think like let's say it does mm-hmm. let's say it does let's say that it does commoditize mm-hmm. some of it mm-hmm. but i think the pie can expand I and mean, you right. look at let's 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 look at the movie industry mm-hmm. as an example and I, and I, I, I totally understand. And mm-hmm. this is, there has to be a dialogue between the current working population yes. mm-hmm. and the people employing mm-hmm. the tools. But when you think about writers in particular, you know, the movie industry, when it started was mm-hmm. a cottage industry, mm-hmm. immigrants were primarily right. running it. Mm-hmm. Right. And it was very, very small. Mm-hmm. Right. Why is it so big now? Mm-hmm. Because of technology. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you had the invention of the television. Mm-hmm. right you had the nbc's mm-hmm. the abc's of the world right mm-hmm. so you had the, the distribution there on the, mm-hmm. the networks right then they the studio system mm-hmm. was created and like popularized by mm-hmm. folks like mgm and so you productionize mm-hmm. content mm-hmm. right so when you look at that all of that came from technology mm-hmm. right and there were people who were shouting from the rooftops oh my gosh it's the end of the world because books are going to get destroyed there won't mm-hmm. be books anymore right well it turns out we still read books we all yeah. we just we even read, read them more than we have exactly mm-hmm. exactly and so to me i think there's this and it makes sense there's a fear that the if the pie is fixed mm-hmm. they're going to take more of the pie mm-hmm. what if it's not right what if you're enabling a whole generation mm-hmm. of creators and there's Remember, it used to be just, just was like the big networks could create mm-hmm. content. We've now become used to the fact that it's not these four right. huge mm-hmm. media companies only. Now, granted, a mm-hmm. big budget pictures they quite, own quite a bit, mm-hmm. but there's this now middle and right. long. Oh tail. yeah, the Look indie the programs. Stuff. Yeah, you know things like yeah. That. So mm-hmm. you have creators on Instagram, mm-hmm. TikTok, and mm-hmm. what have you. Again, technology. So mm-hmm. people can consume. It creates more choice for mm-hmm. people. It creates economies of scale, mm-hmm. so that a new generation mm-hmm. of writers. Now, look, the writer in Hollywood 
right now is trying to figure out what their role is there. Mm -hmm. But like, I will bet you money in five to 10 years, every single writer, every single mm -hmm. one, not one exception, right. unless you have like these, like, I mean, I don't know, like a Quentin Tarantino mm -hmm. type that is rebellious, but for the most part, we'll use some versions of mm -hmm. these things to move faster. Right. Right. Cause mm -hmm. they already use screenwriting mm -hmm. uh, software. It's not like they're mm -hmm. writing, you know, on their pen mm -hmm. and paper. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're so, using again, technology. Mm -hmm. I think that there's some, but like on the flip side, just to, mm -hmm. to, to give them like the, um, you know, I've, I've talked to quite a few of, of these folks as well. And the actors or uh, th th there's some areas where AI, it's it's a little bit more difficult. So the mm -hmm. likenesses, mm -hmm. so if, you're, if you're in a movie and you're an emerging actor and you're like in the background, mm -hmm. say, for example, in a lunch scene right. or you play like a one-liner, mm -hmm. you might make $200 for mm -hmm. that work in day. Right. But that's how a lot of people start their careers mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever. I think some of the things that people are finding, which makes sense, is the way that their likeness is being used. Mm -hmm. Because with AI, you could be in one movie, and right. if the studios have mm -hmm. their way, they take your likeness once, mm -hmm. and then they bought, pay you two hundred dollars mm -hmm. once, and then they have for the remainder mm -hmm. in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. And so, I think people understandably are frustrated right. about it. like oh, imagine yeah. you're Bradley mm -hmm. Cooper, young, and mm -hmm. you're in that. That's the and then mm -hmm. now some studio has your likeness. Now you're famous, Bradley Cooper. Mm -hmm. That's that's damaging. Mm -hmm. And so there are some discussions that need to be have about. Mm -hmm. rights and, and same thing that happened in the digital revolution mm -hmm. right I, i'm sure you remember when like music was moving online and there was mm -hmm. all the rights management mm -hmm. and right. like, mm -hmm. we had, those are the same types of discussions mm -hmm. that i think need to occur mm -hmm. now and they're right. hard they're gonna be right. really hard oh yeah you know and and uh and and like we said you know it, it is scary uh but you know we've also you know we have been using a lot of this technology for years you know big fan of the harry potter stuff that most of that's not real, folks. I hate to break it to you. Um, you know, and, and and it's really funny now when we look back at some of it, we're like, oh, that was bad CGI. Um, you know, and and but now, you know, you look at it and you go, wow, that dragon looks real. That dragon could be there. And, you know, I, have that, a, I have a good CGI uh, mm -hmm. quick story for you. This is another like kind of technology, um, you know, in the short term, people are resistant, long term, it, it mm -hmm. tends to it tends to work itself out. Mm -hmm. So um, do you remember what movie? kind of broke out for 3d movies the pixar movie do you remember which one it was no it was toy story oh okay that makes sense remember mm -hmm. yeah and uh tom hanks was in it mm -hmm. do you know who was the one of the biggest outspoken critics of 3d technologies on the behalf of actors before that movie years before tom hanks, tom hanks. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and I'm not criticizing right. him by any means. I'm just mm -hmm. saying people will change. And mm -hmm. I think, again, the initial reaction is you take that technology and you regularize mm -hmm. it against your current environment. You right. say, oh, well, wait a minute. If all actors are replaced with 3D characters, then there's no acting. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You resist. But mm -hmm. what they realized was it's another medium. And it mm -hmm. turns out that everyone, some people want to see these 3D movies and some mm -hmm. want to see acting. And, so, right. and the pie kept getting mm -hmm. bigger. And now you have mm -hmm. this almost trillion dollar movie business. You have like mm -hmm. gaming and all these mm -hmm. other applications of it and so i think if you view, view it as um the world is expanding mm -hmm. and there are more opportunities it makes things a little bit easier right mm -hmm. you know and 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 the question is of course regulating it you know when people say you're not going to use this at all really how on earth are you ever going to regulate that um you know and and you know it's just it's and and so it does have to be that combination you know and 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 you know say for an actor okay you know if, if that image looks exactly like me you got to pay me for that if it looks 50 percent like me bleh, you know, i mean and that is where it gets tricky i mean you it's know gonna what if, really yeah, it's gonna get really tricky it's gonna be really tricky you know and and but yeah i still remember and i don't remember which movie it was but when john candy died in the middle of he you know he really and and they computer generated him for the rest of the thing um you know star wars you know carrie fisher was not in the last one that that i've seen um but she was in there because they were able to to use you know both computer and and you know prior well, images well watch I'll, I'll give you a prediction here and we'll see in five years if i'm right or 10 years i will bet you that some of these famous actors who are saying you know again uh, that that they that are resisting this and again mm -hmm. I, this is not a criticism this is the, a, a structural bet mm -hmm. i think there will be companies that will license the the voices right the mm -hmm. likenesses of right them they already do mm -hmm. and they will then use them and apply them mm -hmm. and there'll be people who say wait a minute my career is waning mm -hmm. um 
or I'm, I'm, you know, I want to retire mm-hmm. and uh, I'm going to use the example of Morgan Freeman. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Morgan, if you're listening, but uh, you know, I don't know if you want to retire, but let's just say that he's, right. a, he's a really iconic, mm-hmm. beautiful His voice. voice. People, yes. I mean, mm-hmm. people love it, right? It's mm-hmm. so famous. And some studio says, you know what? I want Morgan Freeman to be in mm-hmm. movies for another, whatever, 20, mm-hmm. 30 years. Right. And he says, wait a minute, I could get an upfront payment now mm-hmm. and I can do all the stuff and I, I would work mm-hmm. less yeah. because of the work I've done in the mm-hmm. past. And I think you're going to see mm-hmm. that happening because it's getting so good. Mm-hmm. If you sample someone's voice for 90 mm-hmm. seconds, by the way, there's nefarious applications of this, right. you oh, can yeah. generate, mm-hmm. you know, have someone talking mm-hmm. and speaking like them. Mm-hmm. And so that could be a great application mm-hmm. um, that all of these folks, right. like once they've created notoriety, mm-hmm. hey, you know what? You could be in actually three mm-hmm. movies instead of one mm-hmm. because right. you're licensing your, mm-hmm. your likeness and maybe you're making... I don't know less on that particular, mm-hmm. but you're but you're making higher. three times, yeah, yeah. You got it, you got it. Well, and you know, I'm a I'm a huge college sports fan, and of course, the big thing that has kicked in in the last couple of years with them is name, image, likeness. Yep. You they know that the universities were and are making their money on those players. You know, and and it's you know it's 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 the you know the the Heisman winners. It's you know all of those people. So They're making so much money, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, and and. So, yeah, how do we compensate those kids? It, you know, I think that's, you know, we're discovering, oops, kind of, you know, things got a little some carried of the, away. Um, some of the players now are making oh, uh, millions. more than NFL players. Yes. Oh, well yeah. It. yeah. Um, by the way, I, I will I will throw this out there. Um, and, and this is, it's funny. I don't know if you knew this, but like these athletes mm-hmm. should be using, if not something like collective, mm-hmm. you know, like an analog right. because mm-hmm. they're literally right down the strike mm-hmm. zone. They right. are companies. Yeah, they, they are a business mm-hmm. of yeah. one. Yeah. They need mm-hmm. to protect themselves. Mm-hmm. They need to do their books. Right. They need to do their mm-hmm. taxes. Oh, yeah. And I think it's going to be a massive. Mm-hmm. I mean, I talked to someone who was working with a very, like, very famous college team. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they were saying that the college team, it was coming tax season. Mm-hmm. And you know, NIL has only been around for like mm-hmm. a year or two. Mm-hmm. The kids were freaking out right. because they didn't do their taxes. Mm-hmm. So literally the athletic department had people mm-hmm. in the athletic department doing yeah. their taxes. On I Turbo mean, these tax. are 18 year olds that we're yeah. talking about. And, yeah. you know, and, and it's, 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 mm-hmm. it's like a, it's yeah. like a, you know, pardon mm-hmm. my French, but you know, a storm that's like, mm-hmm. it's going to get worse yeah. because oh, yeah. some of these people are mm-hmm. making millions. And right. so, you know, the IRS is going to come mm-hmm. down with a hammer on this. Well, stuff. And, you know, they're also going to get taken advantage of, you know, we see that, Absolutely. we see that with, with athletes all the time at, at every level. So why not, you know, it's make it harder for that to happen by making sure that you are incorporated, um, you know, and, and all of those things. And, and like we said, they're 18, you know, and, and, and they shouldn't be worrying about all of this stuff. I mean, some of these folks, they do have staff. You know, they've, they, you know, all of these things. So how is that being taken care of? So that said, that leads us to a great segue. Tell us more about Collective and what are the services that you provide? So, um, you know, as we mentioned, kind of at the start, our objective is to help fo- people focus on their passion, on their paperwork. Mm-hmm. Paperwork is a big pile. Mm-hmm. And so we start with a pain point that is, we think, near and dear to all people's hearts or they want to keep away mm-hmm. is, is tax. In mm-hmm. order to do that, we offer, you know, this all in one platform. Mm-hmm. So it's all online. It's a subscription service. You can pay either monthly mm-hmm. or uh, on an annualized mm-hmm. basis, depending on how you want right. to. And you get um, a discount. Mm-hmm. You can get a discount, right? And um, we offer company formation. Mm-hmm. If you uh, S election mm-hmm. so for tax savings, and then we have a bookkeeping service, payroll, mm-hmm. and then tax. So we'll do quarterly as well as annualized tax. And so mm-hmm. that's the package that at the end will deliver you that savings. And right now, you know, our average man, member plus or minus is saving around $10,000 a year with that mm-hmm. system. So um, I think we're, we're on our road to, to delivering right. on that on right. that promise. It's paying for itself. I mean, that's the important thing. It's also tax mm-hmm. deductible, by the way. Mm-hmm. The ah, service itself. Even better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's at collective.com. Easy. Correct. Easy. Correct. Easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I mean, this really has been so much fun, um, you know, and and it, it, it just, you know, we we have to talk again. We have to figure, you know, at some point we have to figure out who wins the bets, right? Um, but uh, put a but, lot down. We put a lot of chips I down. Know, I could be broke. I know, you know, and and uh, so, but, but yeah, this is like I said, this is something that is evolving so quickly. We need to have you on again because you know I, I think it will be something where we'll need to update things. But you know, until then, do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave everyone with? You know, 
I'm going to leave you with something maybe simpler. Uh, all of us are, are, you know, focused on business. I think anyone who's listening to this show probably is pretty competitive and wants to be the best. I would say uh, one thing I would say that's been, you know, really, really powerful, I would say piece of advice is just remember to take a breath, right? It's the best advice I ever got. It was the founder of FedEx Ground. Um, and this, this guy would say to me, and I, I didn't quite get it because I was younger. And I think that sometimes we're so new technology we discuss mm -hmm. all these forces, but you know, I think it's such a powerful tool to just slow down. Let's say you're frustrated. Let's say that you're even, even if you're not in, in between meetings, take some time to stop and just breathe and you will have a better day, a more productive day and you will have better meetings. And I know it sounds really simple, but it's very powerful. So I, if you remember, uh, I hopefully you remember collective and you remember the, you know, the solution we can provide for you if it's applicable, but remember that because I think it'll help you in your life too. Perfect. I love it. Well, as I said, we will have you on again and, and I can't wait to do that. I'm Deb Creer. I've been having such a fun discussion with Human Radfar of Collective. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.